all of this has laid a base for the fourth industrial revolutions where humans and machines are all interconnected to be then followed by the AI and web 3.0 revolutions where the physical and digital world start fusing. I expect that just like India's internal demand leading to a surge in FDI, the number of startups being created will lead to a surge in venture capital investments. We see funding in India first cross $1 billion in 2015. This year, VC funding will exceed $50 billion and this is just 50x acceleration in just 8 years. India stands as the foremost example of how a smartphone and an inexpensive data powered by aspirations can create the jobs and transforms a nation. The third dimension that will prove to be a powerful transformation lever for India is in the space of our energy transitions. Energy poverty is today developing world's greatest challenge and this gap will need to be mostly filled with a renewable energy. While India currently ranks third in the renewable energy attractive index and is the world's third largest energy consuming country, there is little doubt that India's energy transitions will be unparalleled as it races to meet is energy needs. By 2050, India will need 400% more units of energy than it currently consumes. While this may seem challenging, the technology advancement that we are seeing is expected to make this possible. Given the dramatic and continued drop in the cost of renewable energy, especially solar power. The marginal cost of green power is headed to zero. The ability of this zero-cost electron to economically split a water molecule and create 100% green hydrogen in the future is now certain. The combination of a solar and wind power coupled with the green hydrogen opens up unprecedented possibility for India. I would go as far as to state that the revolution in alternative energy technologies opens up the possibility that by 2050 India can become a net green energy exporter. This will also enable decentralized power generations required to accelerate the micro-sizing of any process. It will enable entrepreneurship opportunities across micro-manufacturing, micro-agriculture, Micro banking, micro healthcare, micro education, everything that India's rural populations needs for its development. Cooling the planet down will be one of the most profitable business and the largest of job creator over the next several decades. I am in no doubt that India will lead the global energy transitions. 
This is why the Adani Group is making a massive investment in driving not just India's but the global energy transitions. Over the next decade, we will invest over $70 billion in this space and build and build the world's most integrated renewable energy value chain. There can be no greater sign of my confidence in the India's growth story. Along with my optimisms, I do recognize that a lot of still needs to be done as the economy grows. What we cannot afford to do is fall into the classic two-speed nation trap where the top half of the society grows prosperous and the bottom half remains poor. Therefore, our wealth creations must focus on both quantitative factors related to per capita GDP and qualitative factors that include education, skills, and healthcare. As both domestic companies and multinationals take advantage of India's market size, we will need stronger mandates wherein corporates are compelled to rise to the challenge of enabling a social structure that recognizes the core of our culture and is aligned with our national needs. India cannot be just seen as a land for making and taking profits out of its geographic boundaries. This is why I said at the start that the superpowers in the multipolar world must recognize there is no one size of democracy that fits for all and the aftertaste of globalization is not as flat as was predicted. We are at the World Accounting Congress and so let me now briefly touch upon my views about the future of these professions. I fully buy into the view that India will continue its journey to become the largest hub for offshore accounting services and further increases its share of the global knowledge process outsourcing market. Advancement in a cloud-based artificial intelligence, distributed computing, and cyber technologies make this far easier. I foresee some of the domestic companies taking full advantage of this massive possibility given the inherent strength of our cost and efficiency equations. However, in my view, given the understanding of financial intelligence, budgets, and quantitative and technical acumen accountants bring to the table, I believe that some of the smartest CEOs and service head should also come from the accounting professions. This is what I would ask accounting professional to aspire and inspire the younger generation of accountants that follows you. My dear friends, let me close by saying that if there ever were a time to be Indian, be in India and associate with India, 
it is now. The foundation to build a new resilient India has already been laid. We will be an India that taps into our own markets to help it become self-reliant. An India with a democratic system that is based on dignity and equality. An India that has, that has the courage to aspire. An India that is responsible power and a strong at its border. The policies that have been put in place have allowed our nation to make a tremendous progress over the last decade and put us firmly on the path to become an Atmanirbhar or self-reliant India, a self-reliant society that is 100% literate, 100% healthy and 100% vocationally trained and most importantly, a self-reliant India that has for ever eliminated poverty, all achieved well before 2050. <clears throat> this is what being a superpower should be all about. I hope you share my business, bullishness about India. Thank you. And Jai Hind.